what do you want to look at now? We want to look at n minus 1. What's another way to say look at n minus 1? Consider, yes. <laughs> Consider n minus 1. Uh, we might not have to say that, in fact, if, if we just cut to the chase. What about n minus 1? Well, it's not an A, therefore it's an S. Well, I'll just tell you to consider, because it's a gentle way of saying, pause and think about this for a second. Consider n minus 1. It is not in A, because it was the least, uh, n was the least element. So it's an S. Oh, OK. But property by property B, n minus 1 plus 1 should therefore be in what? Is in S, which implies implying n is in S a contradiction. Again, if you think the reader has any chance of not seeing the contradiction, you could remind the reader it's a contradiction because n was in A. OK. So what does this mean? This means that the original, uh, the original statement is, in fact, true. Um, therefore, so it, now, initially, if you assume the reader d hasn't had that much practice with th these kinds of proofs, you might want to remind the reader the contradiction implies that um, the, the thing you're trying to show holds. But as you get more mature, stopping with the contradiction should be enough. Okay? Yes? Oh, um, uh, does it imply that A is uh, is empty? Yeah, we assumed it was not empty. Yes, very good. So the question was, the question was, should I not have t uh, reminded the reader that A is in fact non-empty? And that that would be good, actually. Or, or I guess you could say this shows that A is empty, and therefore uh, it, it, uh, N must, S must be all of N. Yeah. Um, which would be the most elegant way of saying this? That's the question to ask. Step back a second. Um, what would be the best way to say this? Um, in order to say it has a least element, I have to assume that it's non-empty. So I think I want to tell the reader, because we started this way, suppose S uh, exists with the given properties, but S is not N. Then A equals N minus S is non-empty. That's, uh, that's the thing that follows. And therefore, so it has a least element. OK? Everybody good with that? Yeah, so this also points out another thing I, I think I want to emphasize, and that is, you know, when you're doing a proof or you're doing any kind of mathematical writing, it, it's always a process of revision, right? You see a way to the solution, but then you see a better way of making, making the, the, uh, the proof uh, airtight and clear. So should not be surprised if you come back and have to come back a few times and clean things up. Okay, excellent. So the well-ordering principle is the foundation of induction. OK, so let me um, say a few things about the, the method of establishing a proof by induction. And then we'll do some examples. So if you want to do a proof by induction, So what does this have to do with the, the method of, the, of, of uh, induction? What you usually want to use induction for is to prove a whole series of statements, infinitely many statements, all at once. 
okay? And those statements are indexed by the natural numbers. There's a first statement, there's a second statement, there's a third statement, et cetera, okay? And so normally you, you think of a collection of statements, which I'll just call P of n, let P of n be a statement, some statement that is uh, uh, indexed by the natural numbers. Okay. And maybe I'll say let P uh, n be statements, uh, statements indexed by the natural numbers. And so the idea then is to show P of n is true for all n. Now what would that mean? What I'm really looking at is a set. I'm looking at the set of all statements where P of n is true. That's a subset of natural numbers, isn't it? And I will show that the statement is true for every natural number if I show that it's true for the first. And, it's tr and if it's true for the kth statement, then the k plus 1th statement is also true. Okay? Do you see how we're really just using this fact? So the idea is to show p of n is true for all n. For all n, we'll show two, th two things. The first thing is that p of 1 is true. This is uh, often called the base case. And we want to show that if the kth statement of true is true, if p uh, of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is true. Okay, and this also has a name. It's called the inductive, the inductive step is this step, right? So this is the inductive step. Ah, okay. Base case, inductive step. Uh, the inductive step is this entire is this entire piece right here. What, what assumption do you normally make when you're doing the inductive step? We're well, assuming something, right? And this has a special name. We call it the, the inductive hypothesis. Okay. You'll often hear that, the inductive hypothesis. All right. So the principle of induction says this is enough to show that P of n is true for all n. Okay. So to show this, we'll show this, and I just want to conclude then by saying then the principle of induction uh, implies that this is true. Or then by the principle of induction, P n is true for all n. Okay. Okay, that's the method of, of proofs by uh, induction. And uh, basically what we've just done is we s basically looking at the set of all n such that P of n is true. That's really what we're doing. So behind the scenes, we're looking at this set and showing that S is n and showing we're considering we're really considering this set and showing s is n okay okay um, i should probably mention that there is another version of induction uh, which is related to this one. It's completely equivalent, but it looks stronger, and so it's called the principle of its strong induction. And uh, the principle of strong induction has the same uh, hypotheses here, except B looks slightly different, okay? So strong induction, uh, we're going to use a B prime instead of B, where, where 